Right now, this is the most selling product at Sephora, so we have to see what's the real deal with this new eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona. This is the Retro Glam palette. It is $69 and made in Italy, and the packaging, it's already given. Look how pretty it is. It looks like you got this little design inside. I think I'm very excited with this palette because this is supposed to be a little bit of this and this, and you guys know that I've been loving these two palettes since day one. Let me show you how this baby looks inside. So sweet. Stunning. So in here we have the pinks and the neutral nudes of the mini retro with some of the finishes that we have in the glam palette. I'm so happy with the color story because when we first got the mini retro, I knew we were missing something. This is just not complete even though I'm obsessed with every single shade in here. But then when we got the glam palette, the cool tones in here, they're bomb. I actually did pair these two babies together because you see both of them they're cool tone so now we're getting the cool tone shades in here plus the color yes that's exactly what i needed before i show you how i created this look let's do some swatches we're gonna start from this first shade and then we're gonna go boom and then like that first shade it is a sparkly metallic vintage rose with a silver shift is a metallic dark cool brown. One is a metallic light medium vintage champagne. Matte cream powder medium dark sage green. I don't like the way that this one swatched. Metallic light medium sage green. Oh, that's pretty. It's a metallic medium dark warm taupe. This one is a matte medium sage green. The matte light neutral rose, matte pastel sage green, matte medium muted glaze, a sparkling light champagne pink. So nice. A matte light limestone. It is very light. You can barely see it. Let me swatch it again. We have this metallic pastel sage green. This matte medium dusty rose and this metallic medium dark muted forest green. I do think that the shades are very close. We have a lot of the same greens just in different formulas. Before I tell you what I really think about this palette, let me bring you all up in my grill and show you really quick how I created this look. Of course, I'm priming my lids with the Jerry Cosmetic Eye Base. With my big fluffy brush, this one is the E29 from Rose and Benz. We're gonna start with this shade. We're not gonna set the eye primer with powder. We're gonna leave it just like this. We're gonna apply this shade right here on the inner part of the eye and also on the brow bone. This is just gonna give the eye a little hint of pink, so when we apply the rest of the shades, we see it peeking through like we do right here. This pink is very light. Now I'm about to use the E28 from Rose and Benz Beauty. I like this brush for what I'm about to do, but if you don't have this one, I also like the 206 from BK Beauty. You see how they're similar shapes? One is bigger than the other one, but I love these brushes for packing shadows. Or you can also use this one from Morphe and Makeup by Aerial. This one is the A29. Next, we're going to be using the shade. And we're going to be packing the shade in the inside part of the eye, right on the crease. This shade is pretty and pigmented. The same way that it looks in the pen, it's looking on the eye. And I haven't even built it up yet. I am going to go back in. I'm going to apply a little bit more. And I'm keeping the shade right on the crease. I'm only gonna bring it halfway into my lid. I'm trying to keep the shade right on the crease and I'm only gonna bring it halfway in. I really, really like this shade. I'm just wiping off the brush and we're gonna go back with the first shade that we used, this one. And I'm gonna use it to blend these edges. But I am noticing that when you mix these two pinks together, they're becoming one shade. You can even see which one is which one. Hmm. We're going to use the same brush, so make sure that you wipe it down really good. And then now we're going to go in with this shade. I'm going to do the same thing that I did right here. I'm going to build it up in the other half of my crease. This one is also pigmented. I mean, so far, these two shades, they're true to color. Actually, no, I do think that this pink looks a little darker on the eye. Make sure that you keep it on the crease and all you have to do is do the little tap in motion in place, back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to be using the same brush, just know that I am wiping my brush down in the little towel that I have right here in front of me in between colors, so do the same thing. We're going to pick up this shade, we're going to blow this up and I'm using it to blend the edges of the green that we have on the crease. 
keeping it in place only on the outside area of the eye and i'm sure you noticed it already but i'm not doing a crazy blending no all we have to do is a little tapping technique i'm gonna use whatever i have left on my big fluffy brush we're gonna use it to diffuse everything right here by the brow bone and always go on upward motions to give the eye look like a lifting effect and also we're gonna transition these two shades together and you see how we're not blending mm -mm. just softly pat everything together i'm barely touching my eye now I'm going to be using the mini booster from Sonia G and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the shade. We're going to apply right here on the outer V, slow circular motions. And this shade, it's not giving me enough depth at all. Bro, you see how I have three different shades right here and they all look the same. Mm -mm. We need more definition, so we're going to have to go in with a liner. I'm gonna be using this liner from Wayne Gosh. It's like a dark gray. This is a shade Granite. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit right here on my outer V. We're just gonna create like a little messy wing. I do wanna go with the flow and I want the look to be cool tone. And that's the reason why I didn't use any brown liner or nothing too warm. If you don't have gray, you can use black. We're gonna go back with the same shade. And I'm using it to blend the liner. I'm just doing little circular motions back and forth. You do have to make sure that whatever liner you use have to be creamy and blendable. You don't want no waterproof liner, none of that, because you're going to fuck up the look. Now with the worker pro from Sonia G, we're going to be going into this shade. First, I'm going to show you how it looks dry. And then, of course, we're going to wet the brush. I'm going to apply right here in the inner part of the eye. And that doesn't need no help. I mean, that looks booming with a dry brush. And I know it's going to look stunning if you use your finger. Now I'm just wetting the brush. I like it though because it didn't have no fallout. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the same shade. And I'm just going to reapply right here. To be honest with you, they look the same, so you don't have to wear your brush, which is a good thing. You don't want to wear your brush if you don't have to, and that also means that it's a good shimmer. You know what's funny? That I actually like it more with a dry brush because it looks a little bit more shiny and sparkly. Once you apply it with a wet brush, it gets more like a flat metallic shade. Now with the tip of the brush, I'm gonna be picking up a little bit of this shade and we're gonna apply this one right here in this little space. Try not to bring it all the way to the center of the lid because we're gonna be using that with another shade. Let me wet the brush a little bit. I'm gonna be picking up a little bit of the same shade, Oscar. And I'm gonna apply a little tiny bit more right here. I mean, this one is just a little lighter than the first shimmer that we use right here in the inner corner of the eye. But wow, they're super close. Like, you won't know that I have two shimmers if I don't tell you. With the other side of the same brush, we're gonna be picking up this shade. And this one is going right on the center of the lid. And I'm gonna keep it low. Don't bring it past your crease. This is how it looks dry. Now let me wet the brush. I'm picking up a little bit more. And here you have it wet. <laughs> Same thing. The good thing right now is that we're not dealing with any fallout from the mattes or the shimmers. Now I'm going to be using a little detail brush. This one from Morphe, the M431. And we're going to be picking up this green, which is a lot lighter than the greens that we have right here. We're going to apply it on the tear duct. The brush is dry. And this is the perfect shade for the tear duct. I like it just like this. You really don't need nothing else. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to notice it, but in this tear duct, I only have this shade. And on this one, I have this one, and then I applied a little bit of this one right on top. See how this one looks a little bit more intense? And that's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm just gonna apply it on top, because this shade, it's a little bit more sparkly. Also, this shade, it's perfect for the brow bone. Look at that. Mm. 
Next one, you're gonna have a little bit of fala, so I recommend you to wet your brush before you use it. It's this one right here. The formula of this one is a little loose. I also picked up a little bit more, and I'm just gonna apply right here to transition these two shades together. And I'm applying very little, just like a little pop. Now for the lower lash with my flat defender from Sonia G, we're gonna start with this shade. I'm gonna apply it along my lower lash. I'm bringing it a little lower than usual because I love pink on my under eyes. Now I'm gonna be using this other flat defender from Sonia G. This one is from the Kajaki set. I like this one for creams or when I have to wet the brush. And then this one, I always use it dry. I'm gonna wet the brush because we're gonna be working on the lower lash and I don't want no mess. We're gonna pick up this shade and I'm going to pat this in on my whole entire lower lash. Now I'm cleaning up the brush. I'm gonna make sure I wet it again. And we're gonna be using this color and I'm gonna pick it up with the side of the brush. And we're only gonna apply this right on top of the lower lashes. If you have this quad from Tom Ford, you're set. They came out with it like two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, for the holidays. This is the Soleil El Lune. Like seriously, look at the shades. You see how they basically have the same shades? This, it's this. The color stories are super similar, even more in person. This one from Tom Ford leans a little tiny bit more blue. And then the one from Natasha and Nona, it's a bit more green. But trust me that in person, they look like they're the same shades. And on the eyes, you are not going to be able to tell which one is which one. Here, the darker shade, they're a little bit more brown, but they're still cool tone. And then this one from Tom Ford is like a straight up gray. But if you create a look with the Tom Ford quad, and then you apply a little bit of brown liner on your outer V to give the look some depth, Trust me when I tell you that you're gonna end up creating the same exact look and of course I know that not all of us have this quad from Tom Ford. It was a limited edition I don't think you can get it anymore But if you already have this beauty in your collection, please save your coins with this one I mean if you missed out on this one and you've been wanting these beautiful shades then here you have it Babes, okay, so we are done with the application part of this video Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like the look this is a beautiful palette, but it's definitely not a must-have. There's something about it that is not completing me and that is blocking me from recommending it to you. Don't get me wrong, when it comes to a formula, it is a one. Natasha and Anna did her thing. The shimmers, they're popping. You don't even have to wet your brush, and that says a lot. The mattes, they're beautiful, blendable. They're not patchy. They're creamy. But I'm just confused when it comes to the shades. I mean, after you apply them on the eye, they all look the same. And that's not the point. You're only going to be able to create three looks one pink one green and if you mix the shades together you're gonna get the pink and green look that i have on right now that's it this palette didn't even get me created i mean in my mind right away i knew that there was only so much i can do with this shades things can get a little boring you definitely don't need this if you already have the glam and the mini retro mm -mm. you can create something super super similar with these two palettes besides that this is so not giving holidays vibe i mean it is giving a little bit of winter but i already know that i'm gonna put this away and i'm not gonna pull it back out to spring also wish that we had something a little bit darker than these two shades and this one because i know that's not going to show on dark deep skin complexion don't get me wrong i know that the shimmers they're going to look chef kiss if you have deep skin complexion because they're really going to stand out but the fact that i needed to go in with a liner for the finishing it was a little bit annoying i'm looking at this more like pops you have to be ready to pair this with any other palette that you already have in your collection because this by itself is just not cutting it can you just save your coins on this one deal don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this palette do you like it you don't like it do you feel the same way i do let us know and i love you to the moon and back Mwah. see you on the next one